Hey, I'm Anfa. In this mini-series, I'm synthesizing a Trump drum loop from scratch. In the previous entry, we've synthesized the 808-like kick bass. In this one, we're doing the snare. If you've missed the first entry, check it out, as I don't want to repeat myself too much. Let's get going! So here's the MIDI part for the snare that I've prepared. Let's loop one busy part of that so we can easily hear what's going on. Now let's open up Zenit SubFX interface. And the first thing, I want to lower this one octave down. I also want to make it louder. Now let's play with the frequency envelope to give it that drum quality, basically. Okay, kinda, but I want to tune it with in the free mode, so let's enable it. Now we can move up all the points freely and add new points in the envelope. That sounds about right. Okay. Now let's go to the voices amplitude and I want to add an envelope. Now in the kick sound I use the global amplitude envelope. Now I'm using the voice amplitude envelope to just shorten the tone. Well, that's too short. That could be nice. Let's reduce the release time so we can see the whole function better. Ah, it's too short of it. Also, let's disable this forced release. And the same in global amplitude envelope. Now you can hear it releases after the notes uh, ended. And that's what I want. I don't want this to be cut off. Okay, that's nice. So maybe a little bit quiet. Let's make it louder. All right, now this is just the drum body part of our snare. We need to add some snare, so the noise component. Let's create a new voice. Let's enable it. First, I'm going to turn it down. Now it's just another sine wave. Let's go to modulation and change it from sound or oscillator to white noise. Let's add a unison voice and now it's a stereo noise. We might reduce the width a bit. Let's go to the voice parameters and here in the amplitude envelope I want to activate the envelope and again turn it into a percussive. Let's make it louder. Let's also disable the forced release so it can decay freely even if the note is shorter. Let's go to the filter settings. I want to add a bandpass filter just on the noise component. So let's enable the filter and change it to bandpass. Now, let's tune it. I want this one to be kind of dark. All right, maybe let's make it a little bit louder and shorter. How about making it... Nope. Okay, let's copy this voice and paste it into voice free. So now we have the same noise component twice, but we can change the filter settings. And the amplitude envelope. To give our snare a sharp, bright transient, 
and the darker tail. I think the the dark noise is a little bit too short now. And maybe to make it louder. Okay, this is the base of our snare. Now there are three more things I want to do to improve it. First thing is I'm gonna go to global amplitude settings, and here we have a function called punch. It's these two knobs. It basically adds a volume spike on the start of the note. This is no punch. Let's add a punch. You can hear there is a volume spike on the on the start of each note, which increases our punchiness, of course. Now we can make the spike shorter or longer. Let's tune it. I think it's a bit too much. Yeah, that's about right. However, looks like we're peaking above zero decibels. Yeah, we can take care of that. So the next thing I want to do is go to effects, go to part insertion, and I want to add distortion. Well, that's way too much, obviously. Let's also release the low pass filter, make it stereo, make the width 100%. Back up the distortion. You can also make it parallel. And that sounds about right. Let's see if we're still peaking above zero decibels. Yes, we are. We can add another distortion unit, change the type to limiter. Again, we need to take care of the filter and the stereo. And now this is pretty effectively limiting our peak level. You see we're peaking at negative seven decibels, but we're losing a little bit of the punch. So I'm going to dial down the mix to recover it. And also let's add an EQ in the end. I'm going to change it to high pass two, which is a re resonant high pass filter. And now I'm gonna find the body of this drum. Yeah, that's about right. So I want to be very delicate. I don't want the snare to sound too hyped, but you totally can. Now let's just boost some highs to bring it more brightness because it's pretty dark. Okay, I think one more thing we could do is add a little bit of reverb. However, we run out of slots here, but we have more, however, in the insertion tab. So let's insert an effect for part one, which is what we're actually using right now. Let's go to reverb. Now, this is huge, really long, and it has long per delay. Now this sounds way too metallic. It's also remove the low pass, low frequencies, and make it very slight. Maybe shorten the time. And that's our snare. Make your own and put your own character into it unless you want to sound like everyone else. But is that a really a good way to stand out? Anyway, I'll see you in part three, where we tackle the hardest sound of the bunch, the hi-hat. See ya!